Jesus, we thank and praise you for this time in your presence before your throne. Father, we love you more each day. And we give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're doing in our lives on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. We thank you, Father, that we're covered in your blood, surrounded by angels. No hurt, harm, or danger will come near our dwelling. We thank and praise you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, that we do walk by faith, not by sight. We command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth any sickness or disease to be under our feet now in Jesus' name. We thank and praise you, Father, for the greater one who lives in us. We give you praise, El Elyon, because you're the most high. We thank and praise you, Father, that in our lives and in whatever situation is going on in our lives, we grant and know that you have the last word. Hallelujah. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I ask a special blessing on those who have tuned in today. Father, open their ears that they may hear what the Holy Spirit is teaching or saying to the church today through his oracle in Jesus name. We thank and praise you, Father. Hallelujah. As I open my mouth, you will fill it with your word. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we walk by faith, not by sight, no matter what. Hallelujah. Well, I'd like you to turn your Bibles to uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Then I want you to raise your Bible in there for our faith confession. Got to get back into this because we're coming back on the 13th of September in Jesus' name. In fact, I got a report that 25 states are showing improvement in the name of Jesus. And that's great. Hallelujah. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm a doer, not just a hearer of God's word. My life is the better after having heard the word of faith. My faith comes by hearing and hearing by the precious word of God. Now, if you believe that, give God a praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. In John, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, there's a scripture reading there that we started Sunday. And it says here, for, every, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, your faith. Hallelujah. Now, faith, again, is simply acting on what you believe. It's the supernatural power of God made available through you, whereby you can change your situation, circumstances, and conditions in life based on the expressed will of God. Hallelujah. And so now, Sunday, we started talking from the subject, winning the fight of your life. Winning the fight of your life. Now, we understand that God's word says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, that we fight the good fight of faith. So then that means we don't fight the devil. He's already been defeated. We fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. And so now we've all been called to fight. OK, we've all been called to be fighters. Part of your spiritual DNA is that you ready for a fight. So why don't you say to somebody, I'm ready for a fight. OK, so you got to realize that the devil will try to attack you in many ways. One, maybe through, of course, a satanic attack where he deliberately uh, brings something up in your life and, and the fight is on. Well, he may also, uh, <clears throat> you may also be challenged by the sign of the times or human error. You might have just made a mistake, human error, and, and, and got into something, hallelujah. Or uh, the call of God on your life. So there are many unpleasant situations that come up in our lives that challenge us and the fight is on, the fight is on. So we are going to have fights. You are going to have, to clean it up a little bit, you're going to have issues, circumstances, and conditions that come up in your life that's going to challenge your faith. Your faith will be challenged. And so that's why we've taken these painstaking efforts, efforts to teach you how to be established in the word of God, how to meditate the word of God, how to train your human spirit so that you can hear the word of God. Because once you get those lessons down pat in your spirit, get a revelation on them, then when the fight comes, you're prepared. You're prepared because although it's going to be a fight, you know you've already won because the word of God is in you. So uh, we also told you about last Sunday, we told you about the fact that um, in, 
uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 30 through 32, where Jesus had this exchange with Peter that uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Peter, uh, Jesus tells Peter, uh, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. So Jesus knew that Peter was headed for a fight, that there's going to be some fence to cuffs spiritually going on in Peter's life. And the ironic, ironic thing about this is that although Jesus knew the fight was coming Peter's way, he didn't remove the fight from him. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't rescue him out of the fight. He knew he was headed for a fight and he loved Peter, but he didn't exempt Peter from the fight that he was about to go through. All he said was that, look, I expect you to recover. And once you win, I want you to strengthen your brothers. So now we have to admit that sooner or later, I don't care how saved we are. I don't say I don't care how established we are. I don't care how how much we quote the word, read the word, how much we're in meditation and all these kind of things. Sooner or later, you will end up fighting and you're going to be fighting, hallelujah, your life for your life or you're going to fight the fight of your life. Amen. And so now we said last Sunday there were three areas that we were going to try to explore. We didn't get through but, but about one and a half of them. We said that we was going to teach you the perspective of the faith fight of your life. Then we was going to talk about the preparation of the fight of your life then the pattern of the fight of your life. Now, remember, when we started talking about the perspective of the fight of your life, you went to Philippians chapter four, verse 13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I don't care what the fight is. I don't care who is with spiritually. I know I win. The Bible tells us again in uh, Philippians chapter four, verse 13, to fight the good fight of faith. So God tells me and fight the good fight of faith but God tells me uh and again I'm sorry I, I messed up there Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me so I understand that because I'm saved I have assurance of supernatural help when the fight comes because I'm saved I know according to the word of God that I am engineered to win because I'm saved I'm never going to be surprised when the fight comes because I was ready for it. I prepared for this and I'm ready to fulfill God's plan and purpose for my life. Remember, in review, last Sunday I said there's enough power in what God says to bring what God says to manifestation in your life. There is enough power in what God says to bring what God said into manifestation in your life. If He's, if the carpet's white, white and he says the carpet's black, then the carpet would be black right then. There is enough power in the word of God to bring what God's word says into manifestation in your life. So whenever you are in a battle, whenever you are in a fight, concentrate on God's word because God's word is full of the power and the manifestation power to bring to pass that which you, you confess with your mouth. Hallelujah. Let's think about it. Just meditate on it for a few moments. You have uh, uh, help. You have supernatural help in your life. Also, last but not least, in the perspective of the faith fight, we talked about that you have to decide in the midst of your fight what kind of fight it's going to be. That's right. You're going to have to find to declare what kind of fight it's going to be. Either it's going to be a millstone, a milestone, a tombstone, a stepping stone in your life, where your momentum in the favor of God moves you to another level. And so then we're into the, what we're going to be dealing with today, the preparation of the fight of faith. Preparation. The preparation for the fight of your life. The preparation for the fight of your life. And we went to Joshua chapter 6. Powerful scriptures there in verses one through six, where it talks about God telling Joshua to enc 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 encompass the, the town of Jericho and that on the seventh day, march around the, 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 the walls of Jericho once a day for seven days. And then on the seventh day, march around the walls seven times and then shout and the walls would crumble. 
Hallelujah. You'll go over into the city and take the city. And so now what we found out in reading those uh, verses is that God gave Joshua a plan of attack. In fact, let's go there and let's read it. I was going to try to uh, rush through that, but I, I dare not. Joshua chapter six, we're going to go to verse one. Joshua chapter six, verse one. It says there, now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and it's mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city. All you men of war, you shall all go around the city once. This you shall do for six days. Then you're going to bring the praise team out. You're going to bring the instruments out. And, and they'll be marching before you as you march around the city those seven, six days. But on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times and the priests shall blow the trumpets and it shall come to pass when they make a loud blast with the ram's horns. And when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout, then the wall of the city will fall flat and the people shall go up every man straightway before him. So in preparation for the fight of your life, realize this, that now that you know how to hear God's voice through his word, through the oracle of God, through the gifts of the spirit, now that you learn to hear God's voice in your inner man, inner witness, now that you've learned to hear the voice of God, God can give you a plan of action to attack whatever you're dealing with in your life, just like he told Joshua. Hallelujah. And you must take, you must, when you get this plan, you must take the offensive. Do less as God told you to do and take the offensive. Don't just sit back on it. When God tells you to move, you move. Amen. And so now you have to learn how to take charge of the fight. How do I take charge of a fight? Just obey God's word. Do exactly what he told you to do. Amen. And so now, and, uh, today what I want to deal with, and that was the preparation uh, for the uh, faith fight. Today, I want to go into another area of the preparation that we have for the fight of our lives and talk to you about the fact that the attack must be from a platform of prayer. The attack that you make has to be from the platform of prayer. Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14. The attack that you make has to be from uh, the platform of prayer. It says in Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14, if my people, you're God's people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Wow. So now God is saying that, that one of the foundational principles that you need in order to overcome when you're in the fight of your life is that that, that one thing that you really need is going to be prayer. You're going to have to learn how to pray for yourself and you're going to have to learn how to pray for others. When I pray, praise God, something always happens when I pray. Now, praying does not inform God. He already knows what you have need of before you ask, but it is the process God has used to get to you that which is necessary to overcome whatever you're dealing with. Success in the prayer moment is seen through the power of humility. I've never said much about that before. Listen, listen to this. The success of the prayer moment is seen through the power of humility. Why? Because prayer is the highest form of humility. Prayer is the highest form of humility. Humility. Your prayer is saying just this. God, I can't do it by myself. I tried. I beat my, beat, <laughs> beat my head against the stone wall trying to figure this thing out. Lord, I can't do it by myself. I'm going to need your help. And in acknowledging that, 
it raises up a spirit of humility in you. So your prayer says, God, I can't do it by myself. So prayer shows your true dependence on God. Prayer shows your true dependence on God. So you're telling God, I, can't, I, I cannot make it without you. In all thy ways, I want you to, to direct my path. In all my ways, in all your ways, and in all my ways, I want you to direct my path. I want you to lead me in the battle that I'm going through now. I remember when I was going through some, some, some uh, health issues, and uh, the, one of the things that, that always kept me going was the fact that I was, I was humble enough to tell God I can't do it. Not by myself, I can't do it. I need your help. And the moment I yielded to God, prayed to God for his help, and prayed according to the word, using the process of faith, things begin to happen for me. And so now, uh, what prayer does is prayer unleashes the manifestation of his wonder-working power in your life. That's what prayer does. And God looks at that humility you have. Because humility is absent of pride. And God wants you to depend on him. He wants us to depend on him. So we have to attack from a platform of prayer. Prayer will unleash the now manifestation of his power. The now manifestation of his power. I've seen in the word of God where there are people who called on God and he answered them right then. I believe God's no respecter of persons. Are all things being equal? If we ask God for something and it's, and it's on the table and our hearts are right, I believe manifestation can take place right then. Hallelujah. I believe that. It can take place right then. Number three, prayer will unleash manifested peace in your situation because of your faith, your focus, and your faithfulness. Yes, it will, it, will, it will manifest peace in your situation. And I don't know if you've been there yet. I have. Where you've asked God for something. And there's a tendency to want to get caught up in the, what's going on. And then all of a sudden, God's peace envelopes your life. And all of a sudden, you got a peace that you don't understand. And you're still looking at the fire. But you got a peace you don't understand a peace that surpasses again all understanding and you walk in the confidence of knowing that God has this. Isn't it amazing that Paul said in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6 that uh, he said now, now, now look people I want you to stir up the gift that's in you. Then he goes on to say for God has not given you the spirit of a coward but one of power inherent power which means a power that belongs to you. Got it? Love, agape love, and a wisdom, hallelujah, that'll change your situation. Every single time that God says that you could stir this up in yourself. Hallelujah. And so we got to get to the point where we realize that in the midst of the battle, something supernatural is happening for us. If we're willing to step out on the word, if you're willing to trust God, if you're willing to get, become humble and <laughs> before the Lord and get rid of all your pride and say, Lord, I can't do it. You're going to have to do it. I can't do it. And watch, see what, watch and see what God does. Amen. So prayer will unleash his presence into your situation. A growing presence. Now listen to this. A growing presence that answers the call at every point. Because I noticed this, that when I was going through, there seemed like there, was, there were, were levels that I'd go to that the moment I got there, I'd have to face the enemy right there. Right there. And every single time I got to that level and I, was, and I had to deal with the, the, uh, uh, the devil at another level, then I realized that his presence was with me at that next level. So again, prayer will unleash his presence into your situation, a growing presence that answers the call at every point as you go through whatever the issue is you're going through. So God is, it's true what God says that he would never leave you 
or forsake you. But now you got to stir these gifts up in yourself. You got to realize that you got the power. You got to realize that you're anointed. You got to realize that this problem is under your feet. Hallelujah. And you'll see a move of God like never before. Then also, we have to attack it from a persistent proclamation. We have to attack our problems, our issues uh, with a persistent proclamation. We know what that is. Go to Mark chapter 11. A, a, pers a persistent proclamation. Mark, I had it here just a moment ago. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, the Bible says, and Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God or have the God kind of faith, the God kind of faith. So God is giving us his faith. That's what that means. For surely I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe them when, hmm? believe them when you pray and you shall receive and receive them and you shall have them. So I have to believe I receive, I have received when I pray. Hallelujah. I have to believe that I've received when I pray. And that activates the faith of God in your life. So I have to understand that faith, this faith I need to make this a proclamation, this persistent proclamation when I'm under in a fight, the faith that I, I need to, to rehearse comes from the word of God. It does not come from watching Empire. It does not come from, from watching uh, Tyler Perry movies or anything like that. It doesn't come by looking at Family Feud. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God on a consistent basis. If, I have, if I'm having a problem with my finances, I'm going to get the word on my finances, on finances, and allow God to minister that word to me on finances. I don't, don't, need, I don't need to be listening to jazz then. I need, <laughs> I need the word on finances. When your body's under attack and the devil and the, and, and, and the devil's attacked your body and he's telling you you got six months to live, you got cancer, the last thing you need to do is put on Quincy Jones. Put the word on that talks about healing your body. Confess that word on a daily base, basis because the word of God is medicine to your flesh. And I prescribe then if your body's under attack, you need to, you need to take three gas spills a day. Three gospels a day. Gospel, God's pills a day. Amen? And you'll see a move of God like never before in your life. Now, many believers have a problem with the faith process. Now, we've talked about the faith process many times, but I'm telling you, when you're in a fight, you have to attack it with a persistent proclamation from the word of God. But a lot of believers have a problem with the faith process because they become intimidated with confessing the word of God. They become intimidated with confessing the word of God. You know, you've been confessing something for a long time. It seems like nothing's happened. After a while, if you keep, if you keep looking at your circumstances, just like Peter, you're going to start to sink. And the sad thing about Peter, when he started to sink, when he took his eyes off Jesus and started looking at everything that was going on around him, his answer was right in front of him. Because the Bible says all Jesus did was reach down and pick him up. He never pick him up. He never had to go through him, out, go to him out on the water. Peter had made it all the way to Jesus. Then he decided to allow the circumstances to rule the day. I'm here to tell you now, hallelujah, that a lot of times, Christians become intimidated because they don't see nothing and they've been confessing for a long time and that intimida intimidation costs them. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah. This is where the devil puts the pressure on to get you to back down off your confession. Under pressure, you can give it away with your mouth. Under pressure, 
You can give it away from your mouth. That's what that intimidation is all about. He keeps applying the pressure until you start saying something different about your condition, something different about your situation. Now, remember, you in a fight and while you're in this fight, you have to attack it with a persistent proclamation. You got to uh, attack it with <laughs> uh, your confession. Now, intimidation, t intimidation, powerful word, powerful word at times, because really when you talk, when you become intimidated, you're thinking about your rep. Because see, at first you all full of joy, all full of God's power and, and you confessing all these things and you were full of something, you confessing all these things. But all of a sudden, when the fight goes longer than you anticipated, when it goes longer than you anticipated, okay, you feel like your rep is on the line. So a lot of times we water down our confession, our proclamation, because we, we feel our rep is on the line. But if you love God and you have God in you and you walking by faith, not by sight, it is not your reputation that's on the line. <laughs> God is telling you to give it to him. Y'all understand that? Give it to me. It's my rep on the line, not yours. Because if I promised you that I would do it, I, co I command and proclaim is already done. You just need to learn how to stand. You just need to learn how to stay established in my word. But it's already done. That's why he told Joshua, look, you haven't even started the fight yet. You haven't even started to operate the plan of attack that I've given you yet over the city of Jericho. But I'm here to tell you now, the city and everything in it is already yours. Now think about it. OK, whatever you're dealing with, whatever fight you got going on now, you already win. No fight has been fixed in your favor already. God just needs you to stand and walk by what? Faith and not by what? Sight. You got it. Amen. God is good. Isn't he? I'm getting excited again. So that's what I got. Under, I got to understand. Under pressure, the first thing that goes is your confession. First thing that goes when you're under pressure is your proclamation. Now think about this, because God has been building us up with so many powerful scriptures over the years. Listen to this. Job 22 and 28. He said, you shall decree and declare or decide a thing and it shall be established for you. So the light of God's favor will shine on your ways. Y'all know it. But when the pressure is on, that's not what you're thinking about. The devil's bombarding you. You're in a fight and the devil's bombarding you with all this other stuff. Now, the one thing I really liked about Muhammad Ali is that Muhammad Ali, when he got in the ring, he was talking. Yeah. They're going to go down in five. They're going to go down in eight. I mean, he kept talking. And even when it didn't happen, it didn't shake his confidence. It didn't shake his confidence. Instead of going down in five, they went down in nine. You see, you got to get to the point where you're so confident in the word of God that even if it doesn't look like something's happening, you got to believe it's already done here. You in a fight. Got it? <laughs> Listen to this one. A self-confident self -confident fool's mouth is his ruin or destruction, and his lips are a snare to his soul or himself. Woo! A man's heart or mind plans his way, but God directs his steps and makes them sure. These are all scriptures and proverbs. A man's belly or self, excuse me, a man's belly or self shall be satisfied or filled with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase or consequences of his lips or words he shall be filled or satisfied whether good or bad by the words that he speaks life and death are in the power of the tongue and they that indulge in it shall love it <laughs> shall eat the fruit thereof so 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 when i'm in a fight man i can, I, I i can't allow my mouth to control the battle in the enemy's favor 
I got to keep talking like I've won. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care any, how many times I've hit the canvas. God has given me restore, restoration strength, recovery strength, and he gives me the strength to go and win if I allow it to happen. Now, one of the things I really love about uh, uh, what is, um, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7, is that there's a powerful, powerful, powerful uh, word that I'd like to give you. Uh, excuse me. Uh, he says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. So he told me to stir that power up in myself. Hmm. But in order, in order to stir it up, I got to first know I got it. Well, how do you know you got it? By faith. By faith. Hallelujah. I'm baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit and power. I got to stir it up. Well, for God has not given us the spirit of a coward, but of power. That is inherent power. The power that belongs to you. You inherited that power. That power belongs to you. Now listen to this. It's a power to reproduce itself. Hmm. This implies a need of consistent activity and use for continued reproduction. In other words, this is the type of power that's in you that cannot lay dormant and be effective. It has to be unleashed. It has to be let go. I got to act on it. Got it? I got to act on it. When I act on it, things happen. From this word, it comes from the word dunamis, and from that word, we get the English word dynamo or dynamics. Got it? Dynamo or dynamics. Now, this is that branch of mechanics related to motion, the principle of active operation. So just as a dynamo, listen to this, needs to be in motion to produce power, you need to learn how to stir that power up in you to attack whatever you're dealing with. Got it? A dynamo or a generator, unless it's running, it cannot produce the power. Got it? The power, the generator is in you. The dynamo is in you. The nuclear reactor is in you. But you've got to fire it up. And how do I fire it up? With the words that I speak. Oh, I know this is good. Thank God for Jesus. The Bible says the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity or wickedness. So is the tongue among many members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell or it brings itself ignited by hell or being itself ignited by hell. So he who guards and keeps his mouth, keeps his tongue and his mouth, keeps himself from trouble. <laughs> I'm going to say that one again. He who, he who guards and keeps his tongue and his mouth keeps himself from trouble. Mm. Wow. Last but not least, from the fruit of his words or mouth, a man shall be satisfied with good. And the work of a man's hands shall come back to him as a harvest. Huh. I don't know about you, but if I'm in, if, I, if I'm a, if I'm in, a, if I'm going to have a persistent proclamation, I have to watch my tongue. If I'm going to do it consistently and I'm in a battle, I have to watch what I say. Got it? Now, confidence in your confession or proclamation <laughs> is what I am willing to say under pressure. Got it? Confidence in the, your confession that what you say will work under pressure, and I said it a little differently this time, will work for you. A third way, confidence in what I say under pressure will always work for me if it's in line with what God told me. Amen. So now, faith is my substance. 
My mouth is my igniter. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. <laughs> and guess what? I don't have to know how God's going to work it out. I just need to know it's already done. So when I get into a fight, not only am I acting the part, I'm talking the part. Okay? I'm a <laughs> we are gangsters for Jesus. Some of us are OGs, some of us are young Gs, whatever you want to call it. But we're all soldiers in the army of the Lord. Okay? The Bible says, cast not away your confidence, which has a great reward. Now, if I, if I don't cast, listen to this very carefully. The Bible says, do not cast away your confidence, which, have a great, which has a great reward. So that means that if I don't do some things, I can lose the reward. If I start talking contrary to what the word of God says, I, I can lose my reward. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> Believers in the middle of their faith fight, in the middle of this COVID-19, in the middle of the fact that your money's not coming in like it was, you're sitting at home a little bit more than you used to, you're not able to shop like you want to go, you can't, you know, you, there's some things you just checking off your list right now. Because of all those things, if I don't watch it, I'll start to lose my faith. Got it? And what I start losing it in is, first of all, the faith process. I can quit asking. I don't believe I receive. And I'm through confessing the word of God. I'm too busy looking at CNN and what's going on now where I can't balance all that with the intake of God's word that keeps me painting the tapestry of my future across, <laughs> painting my future across the tapestry of my imagination. I can lose that. So, 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 so believers in the middle of their faith fight, fight can lose their confidence in the faith process. They can lose their confidence in the faith partnership. That's right. You can lose your, your confidence in a faith partnership. In other words, you quit, you, you quit partnering of, uh, with others of like precious faith. You start partnering with partner, making partnerships with those who think with a losing attitude. Got it? I've always said this. My people here know it. Champions create a lifestyle that brings about a desired future. Losers create a lifestyle that brings about a desired present. A champion will sacrifice the pleasures of the day for the goals that he set in his tomorrows. But a loser will sacrifice their goals for the pleasures of the day. That's how those who lose confidence in their faith are. They're not, they're not champions, they're losers. Now, in closing this lesson, I got to understand that there is a spiritual law out there that faith is a law. And it cannot be, listen to this, cannot be corrected. It's a law. It's not a theory. Got it? It is fact. The word works every time it's applied correctly. I'm going to say it again because that's, that's a strong statement. The word works every time it's applied correctly. Okay, I'm going to say it one more time. The word works every time it's applied correctly. Give you a little hint. God never does anything that he hasn't said first. Okay, I know this is getting a little heavy. God never did anything that he did not say first. Got it? Now, I told you spiritual law is not a theory. That it is the fact that the word works every time it's applied correctly. Then I went on to tell you a, 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 a universal axiom of truth that God never does anything without saying it first. Think about it. He said, let there be, then there was. Got it? Let there be light, light appeared. Right? Let there be all through the Genesis chapter one. God said it and then it manifested. 
it manifested because it was given birth in him first. Oh, y'all got to get this. When I'm in a fight and I continually meditate God's word, confess God's word, pray with a spirit of humility, it will build up in me a picture of what God wants in me and what God wants to manifest in and through me. It changes what I see because then I only see that which is painted across the tapestry of my imagination and I refuse to look at the problem with the concern I did before. No, I don't deny that the problem exists, but what I do is that I look past my problem because past my problem is my solution because my solution is already in me. Oh. Say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus did the same thing. Hallelujah. Go, uh, see, I got going now. Go to uh, Hebrews chapter 12. I'll show you. Jesus did the same thing. Hebrews chapter 12. He said, listen to this. Therefore, verse 1, therefore we are also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with weight, uh, run with endurance the race that's been set before us. Verse two, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now listen to this. Who for the joy that was set before him. Listen to this. He's getting ready to go to the cross. He's in the garden of Gethsemane talking about, you know, if you can, Lord, you know, you can pass this on to somebody else. But now while he's in the garden, and he's thinking these things because his mind is under attack by the enemy, just like yours are, is sometimes. He says, listen to this. This is what he sees. This is what he sees. For whom the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne. What is he saying? He said that he would like to have gotten out of this cross issue. But now because of the joy that was set before him, See, and that joy and the results of it was written across the tapestry of his imagination. In other words, he saw all of us saved. He saw all of us doing what we're doing now. And that was worth going to the cross for. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. So I got to understand. <laughs> I got to understand that God never does anything without saying it first. And when he says it, he says it because it's written across the tapestry of his imagination. Mm. God has built you that same way. If you can get the picture of your future painted across the tapestry of your imagination, well, where am I going to do that at? Meditating the word. Walking by faith, not by sight. Confessing the word. That's how you're going to do it. And then when that happens, no matter what kind of fight you're in, you see yourself as a winner, not a loser. So you don't care if the 15 round bout has to go 350 rounds. You already know you win. They're going to collapse before you. If the baseball game goes longer than nine innings, it doesn't matter because you know you win. They can go until the morning. I still win. So now in, in light, <laughs> I'm closing with my, with a bit of my testimony. I can, I've been confessing God's word, meditating God's word, reading God's word, praying God's word, acting on God's word. And for the first two years, I was going to a doctor and nothing changed. Nothing changed. I had every opportunity to step back off that, <laughs> that uh, proclamation. I had every opportunity to step back and become intimidated when people would ask me what's going on and I would give them the word but the devil's tell me well I don't know why you're saying that you, you don't see nothing your body's still in the same same predicament you're still getting the same results on your blood test so how, where, where, how are you different you're lying you're lying but I kept punching because I had seen the end in the beginning it was painted across the tapestry of my imagination, people. By his stripes, I was healed. And that's all I could see. I was healed. Remember that. You're in a fight. 
Hallelujah. But the fight has been fixed in your favor. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for the word given today. We thank and praise you for the process of faith. We thank and praise you, Father, for preparation for the fight of our lives, giving us a testimony and a proclamation that we will not turn back on. Father, we, not, we're not, we do not have the spirit of fear, but we have that inherent power that belongs to us, the agape love that you've given us and wisdom, hallelujah, the principal thing in helping us to overcome whatever the enemy throws in our lives. We walk by faith, not by sight. And Father, we don't care how long the battle is, we're believing it's done. But we don't care how long the battle is, we know we win. Hallelujah, Satan is under our feet. He's a liar, has no authority in our lives. So Father, we call it done. So now if you're listening to me tonight and you need healing in your body, confess it now in Jesus' name. Say, by his stripes, I'm healed. And see yourself healed and doing the things you weren't normally doing, that you were normally doing before the illness came on. And keep magnifying God's presence in your life. Stay in his presence. We call you healed now in the mighty name of Jesus. If you're here and watching us tonight and you uh, do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we have something for you. For salvation, membership, or prayer, please text NCCC to 71441 and select altar call. Hallelujah. But if you're watching and you do not know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I like the personal touch. Yeah, the, the, the call is good. I want you to do it because we need your information. But I'm going to lead you to salvation right, o right over the program here now. Let's bow our heads. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Father... In the precious name of Jesus, I thank you for giving me your son who died and rose again the third day for me. I receive Jesus now as my personal Lord and Savior. And I thank and praise you, Father, for the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I receive him now according to your word. And I, now I am empowered to live this life. So now I give you praise. I'm saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm equipped and ready, hallelujah, for the next level in my life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer and you meant it in your heart, you're in the body of Christ now, hallelujah. You're in the, the army of the Lord now. So now, for salvation, membership, we're a church that loves like none other, building people a principle, pair, pair, power, praise, and purpose. If you do not have a church home, this is the place. Hallelujah. Last but not least, if you just need prayer for some issue or something going on in your life, NCCC, text NCCC to 71441 and select altar call. Before we go off, look, I want to thank all of you for your continued financial support that makes everything that's going on here happen the way it is now. I thank God for your obedience and I'm praying God to God and trusting God for the corresponding return on your investment in the kingdom of God. This is your year of Jubilee. Believe it or not, this is your year of Jubilee and all the seeds you plant now is going to, is going to explode back into your life. Hallelujah. Not just this year, but for the next decade and on, it's going to explode into your life. Hallelujah. And I believe God has given me that mandate. Hallelujah. So I decree and declare that you're abundantly supplied in every area of your life. And you know what? Your bombs will be filled with plenty. Hallelujah. Now, I know that's the Ligarian Society barns. Your bank account will be filled with plenty. Your health will be optimal. Hallelujah. Every need will be met. God bless you. We walk by faith, not by sight, no matter what. God bless you.